I meet some incredible people and I love it. Like I'm a chef person, but once you get me started, I will hook your ears off and I love listening and I love learning and I love the sights I get to see. I, I really do appreciate my job and what I do. Hello, Miley, and welcome to the Canon Combos podcast. Hi. <laughs> Thanks for having me. I'm excited to talk to you. I've, I've seen your work and it's really beautiful. Um, where are you at the moment? I am in Coffs Harbour, Gumbengi country. I was hoping you could tell, tell me a bit about the work that you do. So I'm a First Nation photographer and my work centres around my beautiful culture. And I've seen a lot of your work with portraits and, and kind of maternity and family portraits and it. Is that something, is that, would you say that's most of the work you work these days or is it a huge variety? At the moment, I'm doing a lot of work around um, Aboriginal maternity and maternal health and children. I've just recently given birth three months ago. So I'm, at the moment, I'm, I'm very passionate about that and just educating because it's important to um, look after ourselves during pregnancy and um, postpartum period. So. Just showcasing that and just connecting with um, Aboriginal women and doing, um, I guess, like self-love sessions, show how gorgeous they look and and building their confidence during these times. What kind of Canon gear are you shooting with at the moment? I'm shooting with the R6 and I love it. <laughs> it is my absolute favourite camera I've ever owned. It must have been a recent upgrade because it hasn't been out for very long. It was, and I was so excited when I had the money for it. I was straight to the shop. <laughs> <laughs> I had been actually um, visiting my camera shop for like a week, just like admiring it in the glass. So, yeah, it was, <laughs> it was amazing. <laughs> and what were you shooting with before that? The RP, which is a great camera also. I love it. It was so good to, um, to switch from DSLR to, to mirrorless. And I suppose it's a transition that a lot of people are going through at the moment, you know, moving from DSLRs to the mirrorless system. Uh, did you have any worries or concerns about it uh, when you first kind of left the DSLR world? No, not at all. I, I heard such great things and had watched many reviews before switching over. I was sold. That was it for me. I was, <laughs> I was going mirrorless. There was no stopping me. I suppose the main thing that I hear from people when I, you know, talk to them about, you know, I, I say to everybody, like, it's mirrorless is where it is now. You will need to upgrade. The technology is so much better. Everything about it basically is better. Um, but people are still hesitant. And I think, I mean, the main thing I get is that um, uh, having to change over all of their lenses to the new RF mount, that's a big deal. And it is, it, it is, you know, you kind of do have to start building your kit again. But there is the adapter and you can kind of, uh, you know, there's a transition you can slowly make. And, yeah, just the technology in the mount alone is, you know, worth, worth slowly worth. upgrading all your lenses and gear. And Was there ever a, a big break moment um, that you can recall or... You know, a moment where you it clicked and you started thinking maybe it could progress from just being a hobby to a career. Did you have a moment like that? Well, my career blew up really quick. I, I still don't know how. I just um I got noticed by Mary Claire and they asked to use one of my images. So I think from there on it just kind of went really fast. Um it was what my career highlight was I'm from a small town called Lightning Ridge originally and my local post office had posted on their Facebook about um, my image being in the, the magazine and how proud the town was for me. So wow. that was my um, big moment for me, <laughs> being recognised by my town. Yeah. <laughs> and I guess in a way does that make you thankful to be from a small town because um often people might think that you need to be in the big city be surrounded by uh you know where all the clients and and headquarters are uh and people feel like you need to be 
in amongst all that stuff to to kind of find your break? Well, at the moment, I, I live in Coffs Harbour, which is still quite regional. And um, the benefit for me is building a relationship with the community, just having that trust and being invited along to local events and the families trusting me with their, taking their photos. It's, for me, that's what means the most. It beats any magazine publication <laughs> or any, you know, big job, just having that, that community relationship. And do you find that photography is, is just a great way to connect with people in your community and gives you like a reason to talk to people and connect with them? Whereas if you didn't have a camera in your hand, you probably wouldn't know, you know, a third of the people around your town because there's no reason to just go up and, uh, you know, chat or, or connect or you don't really get that. It stays pretty surface level, I think. But once you have a camera... And you have a reason to to do something with somebody. You suddenly just it just opens up a lot of doors. Oh, hundred percent. I am a very shy person, so for me to go and start a conversation or just go up and um, engage in a group chat is just it's very scary for me. Whereas photography has kind of got me out of my um, comfort zone and. I've got to build some amazing relationships. Some of my best friends I have now, I've made through my photography, which I'm very grateful for. I know what you mean about uh, being shy because I'm, I'm pretty shy as well in some situations. And, and sometimes I'll be at an event or be somewhere where I don't even really have to take photos, but I'll just take my camera just so I can hold it. And then if I ever just need to leave or get away from someone, I just say, ah, you know, got to take some photos. See ya. <laughs> Yeah, I do that too. It's like my security blanket. Like I just have to have it there. <laughs> I feel so much more comfortable with my camera in my hand. So what coming back to your magazine feature, what was what were the images that they featured? So I photographed two young emerging Aboriginal models. And um, the editor had come across my Instagram and she was really in love with the image and she was um doing a story on Aboriginal businesses and for me I was just I was very fresh into the business world and um, had experienced quite a lot of racism I didn't think anyone had any interest in what I was doing that wasn't from my community so to get that it it meant a lot. When you talk about racism and and some of the challenges that that you face can you speak a little more about yeah what what these challenges have been? Well I guess a lot of my work is on social media that's where I showcase my work um and there's a lot of trolls out there there are a lot of horrible people that just have really nasty things to say so I've had to deal with that and as a first nation aboriginal woman in the business space um photography is very white male dominated and it can be really intimidating and I I feel at times that I'm not taken seriously still to this day even though I've um, been doing it for quite a while now I still feel yeah that um, I'm not taken serious or, or I'm kind of how would I say this like a a diversity box to tick mm-hmm. and you know that can really 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 be disappointing to um, feel that way as a, a creative when you put so much pride into your work well I'm sorry that you face face these kind of horrible things it's it's just you know it must be tough to deal with that on top of you know just everything else it's it's a hard industry enough as it is yeah definitely it is a really hard industry to to break out in let alone like having these other challenges and and has your approach to you know facing these barriers has that changed over time i i imagine that you know when you're first starting out uh, it might. It probably was a lot more overwhelming and um, just t- tougher to deal with. But ha- has that has your time in the industry evolved? Have you developed you know methods of of uh, or like an approach to to kind of overcoming these things? Oh, definitely. I feel like as I've um, matured, I've gotten a lot a lot stronger, and I just ignore it now. Like some t- some things are really hard to ignore. And it does get to me, but a lot of the time it's just dusted off. It's nothing. I 
I have a lot of confidence in my work. I trust my vision. Um, you know, what, what they say, it doesn't bother me. I know they're just trolls. And I think that's, like, like you said, just putting your work first and letting your work speak for itself. I find that I'm being a shy person, yeah, having my work speak for itself and um, at times not knowing how to approach situations with um, racism. Yeah, I just, my work does the talking for me. Mm -hmm. So there are so many photographers out there. It is, it is a tough industry um, to break into. I was wondering, is there anything that you do deliberately to stand out from the crowd or to distinguish yourself? Is, there, is that something you focus on? So my way of standing out, I think, is I try and put as much of myself into my work as possible. I, I have a deep connection to my, my culture and country, so I try to reflect that through my, my imagery. So I think that's what yeah, stands out for me. I love showcasing the beautiful um, country I live in also within my imagery, so. Yeah, I guess that's how I, I stand out. <laughs> and I think that's the best way to, is just to embrace yourself and empower yourself. And that's, you know, as cheesy and cliche as it sounds, <laughs> like there is only one you. Like that is how you, that is the easiest way to, to, to stand out, is just to be yourself. And, um, but, and, it, and it sounds simple. But it actually is quite hard to work out. Now, I think it takes people years to figure this out um, because it's not as easy as it sounds and it's quite nuanced. But I think once you find, you know, what drives you, what is unique about your upbringing and your background and, and your context, if once you kind of figure out all those things and piece it together, it flows through into your work. I feel like my work didn't really stand out until I just said, like, screw it. I'm going to be me. Um, just You're either going to hate it or love it. And when I started really just um, showcasing my culture and, and what I love, that's when people started, you know, taking notice. And that's when I actually started <laughs> to um, build friendships and relationships also. And I'm just like, yeah, I'm going to be me. No more being what everyone else wants me to be. Right. So when you say you being you, that means connecting with what you love, shooting what you love, not being held back by any kind of external voices in the crowd saying anything. Uh, but what, like, what, what, so, but what actually changed? What were you shooting before or what did you feel pressured to, to shoot? I was shooting a mixture. I didn't really have a style. I went from doing, like, boudoir, which is, I love it, but that's not me. Um, and why were you shooting that? Did, did, did somebody tell you that was the, the, uh, like a good thing to do or like where did it come from? I just tried everything. I tried different styles like where I thought I could, you know, make a – there was a market for um, – and I love that style, but it just wasn't me. I – I, I couldn't perfect it and I, I tried a, a multiple styles of um, photography. So you were driven I more by what you thought uh, might be a good business direction. You thought that this might be the way to make a career out of photography rather than the other way around. Yeah, 100%. I even um, did a bit of weddings and I, I love I love wedding photography. I really do, but it was not for me um, with my style. So I found when I started photographing my culture and just the community, that's when I found, you know, my place where I felt most comfortable and belonged. And do you think this focus that you have is like kind of like a, a greater purpose perhaps? Does that, does that guide your decisions with photography and the way that you want your career to go? Is it, is it helpful having, having a higher purpose? It's what keeps me going with my, my business and knowing that uh, I have a lot of support also. How important do you think it is to support other 
um, Indigenous photographers and artists and creatives? It's incredibly important to support Aboriginal artists and other creatives because when you support Black, you're putting money back into the Black economy. Do you have any projects that you're working on at the moment, anything you're excited about? Well, at the moment, I'm working on a project with showcasing our Aboriginal women and how strong we are. But I'm also going on to another project starting this weekend where I'm showcasing people who are in the community who are caring for country. My first shoot is with a young ranger and she's going to be taking me out and giving me a tour of bush tucker and some beautiful sites. So I'm really excited about that. And where's that going to be? It's going to be here in Coffs Harbour. Coffs Harbour is stunning. It is such, such, such beautiful country. I'm very privileged to live here. There's so much to see. <laughs> and this will be a portrait project. Um, does that, do, you have a, do you have an end destination in mind? No, I'm, I'm keen to continue this for as long as I need to. I'm so excited to meet people who are in the industry or doing great things with looking after our country and environment. What I get a sense of from you is that, you know, photography is kind of the medium. Uh, to to experience uh, all of these amazing things to connect with community to connect with people it's almost as if the the photography like is an added bonus later on i meet some incredible people and i love it like i'm a shy person but once you get me started i will talk your ears off and i love listening and i love learning and i love the sites i get to see uh, i i really do appreciate my job and what i do do you have uh, an, any advice for younger photographers or emerging photographers um, who might be coming up to the space, who might be listening? Uh, have there been any, has there been any great advice that you've received or that you've uh, worked out as you've gone through your journey? Keep experimenting. Find what works for you. Don't do what's in trend. Just find what you love. And just keep exploring different styles of photography until, you know, you feel like you've found the one. That's my advice because I've, I've listened to a lot of people on the outside who try to put in, I guess, like what I should be doing, what type of style, and I'm really glad I didn't, I didn't take their advice. <laughs> <laughs> Forge your own journey. Yes. Are there any photographers that you look up to or that you draw inspiration from? I, my biggest inspiration is Arnie Barbara McGrady. She has been doing photojournalism for a very long time. So she's led the way for not just myself, but a lot of other photographers. She's incredible. She's still going. And if you have not heard of her, you need to look her up because she is an inspiration. What kind of work does she do? She does a lot of photojournalism and it's from a, um Aboriginal woman's perspective who has um, seen a lot in her time. She's been doing it for a very long time. So she's pretty much seen it all, um, what we've been through as Aboriginal people and what we are still experiencing. She's, um, she documents it all. Does it inspire you to, you know, explore that genre or try different things? Yes, definitely. I would love to go into photojournalism and I feel like, you know, with my journey, that, that is a good possibility in the next few years. It's something that I would love to do. I guess also, so, what, what is your general approach to, to finding work? Do you need to uh, go out there and find it? Does it come to you? Um. A lot of the work at the moment, it's commissioned. Um, I did have a small break um, on maternity leave, so I've, I've taken a lot of work on, which has been fun. It's kept me busy, but I like doing my little creative projects also, I like working with models. It gives me a chance to get out and get creative and so I'm not doing the um, same old, same old, but I do appreciate the business I work with. They, I will never work with a business that morals don't align with mine. 
and that is very in line with my um my work what are your hopes for for the next the next few years do you have any goals that you're really working towards so my goal would be to get into photojournalism but i've always 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 wanted to get into doing movie stills i'm a huge movie keeper <laughs> so <laughs> i mean even if I got the few, odd few jobs, I would love it. But yeah, my goal is just to keep enjoying what I do, keep meeting new people and visiting new places and eventually get overseas once we're not in lockdown. <laughs> Very soon, in a, in a week or so, I'll be heading up to Cairns for the uh, Laura Dance Festival. That sounds amazing. Uh Yes, yeah, so I'm, I'm working on a photography and film project, uh, you know, showcasing all the Indigenous dancers that are coming through and I'm super excited. I haven't really, um, you know, been in such a situation or, or event. Do you have any tips for me? I would first go and meet with the traditional landowners, just um, go meet with the elders and just find out more about the country that you're on. And that's my advice to everyone. Go find out about the the country you're on and the language group and meet with the traditional owners. Yeah, I think that's super important, you know, because it's it's pretty, uh, can be pretty intimidating just people showing up with cameras uh, who, who don't, who, this is the place to anyone, uh, any kind of photograph you take around the world, but um you know, if you just if your first contact with somebody is them holding up a massive telephoto zooming into your face, probably not gonna you know end so well. You probably you've probably uh, taken a few steps backwards in the trust department. Um, so yeah, hopefully I I can uh, I can build some trust and, and just do do things the right way because I'd love to. I, I just can't wait to immerse myself in, in this experience. That sounds amazing. I'm really jealous. <laughs> sounds awesome. But yes, in, enjoy yourself and make sure you share lots of images. <laughs> and and thank you for asking for my advice. That's, that's lovely. It was awesome to talk to you. Good luck with everything. Good luck with your projects coming up. Thank you. That was photographer Miley Morgan, who's based out of Coffs Harbour. You can check out her work in the links in the show notes. I'm Jared Singh, and I hope to see you next time. <laughs>